Hi and welcome to our Myth Busting Apprenticeship Session. I'm Tom O'Brien. I'm a fourth year apprentice at BT and I'm currently on the Digital Technology Solutions Scheme. Uh, that's a four year degree. I'm also joined with some of my colleagues. Here's Alana. Hi, I'm Alana Green. I'm also a fourth year degree apprentice. And also Hi. here's Lewis. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lewis. I'm a third year degree apprentice. And here's Charlotte. Hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm a second year degree apprentice. And finally, Catherine. Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm a third year degree apprentice. So basically, we're going to be talking about what apprenticeships are. So an apprenticeship is basically the opportunity to uh, work, learn and earn basically at the same time. So you're going to be working full time at a company while studying for a qualification. And then, yeah, as I said, the most important thing is actually getting paid at the same time. I always knew I wanted to work in accounting and finance, so I had two options in front of me, university or apprenticeship scheme. I knew that apprenticeship scheme was the one for me because I knew it was going to kickstart my career, um, get me into work as soon as possible, and that's exactly what I wanted to do. And BT is an international company, so many opportunities all around the world, so that's why I chose BT. So there's a lot of avenues really to do with apprenticeships, and you can go into so many different industries and so many different sort of streams and schemes, uh, and that can really widen your horizons for your career. The vibe on the scheme is really enjoyable, you're constantly supported and you're always encouraged to take risks which push you into great opportunities. I've come in at 18 rather than after uni so I'll be able to continue to build on those relationships as a qualified person with experience and I've actually already secured a job as a finance analyst. So not only do I get four years on my CV as working in an operational role in a really high profile company, I also get the degree that goes alongside it so I've got this full rounded CV where not only am I academic, I'm operational but uh, other things to do with the apprenticeship scheme are such as volunteering, so I've got this widespread CV which really can take me anywhere. Coming in at such a young age, it's really, really daunting to think that everyone is going to be so much older and wiser than you, but I've never been made to feel like I'm, just because I'm younger, that I'm not as capable. I've always been given so many opportunities and things to really get stuck into. I've actually had opportunities to get involved in varying things. For example, I'm part of the Grow Brick team at work where we cut up unrecyclable plastic and stuff it into plastic bottles. But also, we've hosted Office Olympic events where we get everyone on their feet and get them to do fun events at work um, in the name of fundraising and having fun whilst doing it. There's so many opportunities that I don't think you'd get in other businesses. Being able to round your CV at the same time that people at university have to maybe do part-time jobs or maybe not even have a job at all, they're just studying. Being able to round your CV as a person that after four years you're going into a job market with so much experience and so many opportunities open to you. So now we're going to talk a little bit about what we thought an apprenticeship would be like versus what it's actually like in reality. Um, I personally didn't think it was going to be so hands on. I thought I was just going to be sat, you know, next to someone watching what they're doing, making notes. But actually, I'm one of the one of the team. I'm working on my own projects. Um, what did you guys think? Um, for me anyway, so not so much in terms of what an apprenticeship is actually like but I remember when I told my mum that I was joining BT as an apprentice and she thought I was going to be going up telephone poles and everything like that so the fact that there's so much more out there in terms of what the apprenticeships BT anyway what they have to offer and even other companies as well you know so it's not all just like the really like hands-on uh, practical work like that you know there's so many different areas so obviously I spend a lot of my time working on like the BT Sport app or um, or yeah basically stuff like that. Yeah, I was the same to be honest. Uh, I didn't really expect so much responsibility, but I mean, like, in my first six months working for the company, I was working on the BT Sport app and uh, changing things that actually had impacts of customers for like a, like a million customers. So, yeah, I never really expected so much responsibility from an apprenticeship. Yeah, I definitely underestimated um, how involved apprentices were and how valued they are, um, especially in a big company like BT. I, I automatically assumed that apprentices, apprentices would kind of get lost, um, but they're definitely involved. Um, they have a lot of responsibility and they're given a lot of trust to work on different um, projects. So, yeah. Yeah, I think a good thing to add to that is the way that 
you're given a lot of freedom, uh, like we've all sort of mentioned, in the way that you can lead on projects and some of them can be very sort of lead and edge with the new technologies that are coming out. Um, and it's a really good way to put your sort of name across the company. Um, and I found as an apprentice, I thought that wouldn't be a thing, but it's been really exciting to get involved in. Yeah, so that's some testimonials from ourselves, um, current apprentices. Let's hear, some, hear from some ex-apprentices. Hi, my name's Adam De Silva, and I'm a technical manager on the BT Sport Digital team. I'm also an ex-apprentice who joined straight out of school. And joining the apprenticeship scheme was probably one of the best experiences and decisions that I've made. Um, not only did it allow me to carry on studying, but it gave me vital work experience, on-the-job training, allowed me to work with people with decades of experience, and I don't think that's something that you uh, really come across in a, a normal job when, when joining. And one of my favourite things about working for BT and the apprenticeship scheme has been the ability to freely move around, experiencing different parts of the companies and learning new technologies. I started off as an engineer, um, have worked on voice networks, had the ability to work on the Olympics and now on the BT Sport app. So I would definitely recommend the apprenticeship, apprenticeship scheme and good luck. When I was 19, I started an open reach apprenticeship through BT. Didn't really know what I wanted to do beforehand, so this gave me a lot of opportunities and really great training to sort of progress my career. Nearly 10 years on, I'm a delivery service and operations engineer within BT Technology, currently working at Adashtal Park and continuing to progress my career. Hi there, I'm Gordon Douglas, an ex-cybersecurity apprentice based in Edinburgh. I started my BT career four years ago in 2016. As part of my apprenticeship, I gained a degree from De Montfort University in Leicester. I had great mentors who taught me technical and business skills and being able to learn on the job whilst gaining a degree and earning money at the same time was one of the big draws of the apprenticeship. Now I'm a security design and implementation professional working in the banking space. If you're thinking about an apprenticeship, I would thoroughly recommend it. Good luck. Hi, I'm Megan and I started BT as an apprentice electronics engineer in engineering services. The role itself falls into a STEM career role and therefore a very male dominated role. However, this certainly didn't affect my experience. My experience has been fantastic and I've been involved in a wide range of opportunities and I feel proud to work for engineering services and make such a difference. My advice to anyone considering taking an apprenticeship route is to go for it. It was the best career decision I have ever made. Hi, I'm James Miller, uh, joined BT as an apprentice in 2010. I'd say the apprenticeship affected my career in the sense that it actually uh, kick-started it. So prior to joining BT's apprenticeship, I was really just doing jobs and trying to find things that I enjoyed. And I eventually found the apprenticeship which uh, led me on to some really, really awesome projects in the, in the broadcast space around BT Sport and ITV. And then soon after that, discovered I really wanted to become uh, a people leader uh, and moved into line management and then into a senior management position not long after that. So really, it's kind of given me the platform to be able to figure out what it is that I enjoy and what I wanted to do. Um, and if I was to give any advice to anyone considering an apprenticeship, it would be to, to just do it. Uh, and have a very open mind on it as well. Be willing to take criticism, to learn, and just have a really amazing attitude and try and apply yourself 100% to everything you do. Cheers. Hi, my name is John Sikoski. I'm an operations manager at BT Media and Broadcast and an ex-BT apprentice. I truly believe that the BT apprenticeship scheme gave me a fantastic grounding and really put me in a fantastic position to be able to do the job that I'm doing today. I often think there's two main benefits that people talk about about apprenticeships and that's one, getting further education, paid for by the company, and then also doing that whilst being paid a salary. But for me, there's a third point, which is just invaluable and the biggest benefit of doing an apprenticeship. And that's the work experience that you get from working with often industry recognised workers. Um, and I truly believe that working with these people who have got years and years experience has put me in such good stead for the future. Um, I would 100% recommend an apprenticeship for anyone else. In fact, my brother um, is just finishing his apprenticeship scheme. And really, I believe he's done that after the recommendation that I gave him that he should do it. So 100% recommenda recommendation for me and good luck. So that was some of our testimonials from our ex-apprentices. Now we're going to explain some of the stuff we get up to day to day as our current roles.
So for myself, I work within the media second line team. And within that, I get to oversee all the current network um, and also any incidents that actively happen on it. Um, as part of this, I get involved with quite a lot of the kit and get to upgrade them to make sure they're more future proof, um, as well as actually sort of diagnosing any faults that may arise uh, in the active network now. Um, as well as the kit, we do get quite hands on, um, but a majority of that is implemented by our implementation team. Alana was part of that team, so she can move further on with that point. Yeah, so I work in implementation. So part of our job role is helping to install, um, upgrade or just troubleshoot any issues um, in the network that any customers face and also implementing new services that customers may have. Um, so a lot of the time you may be going into customer sites or um, remotely logging into kit, um, creating new diagrams, updating diagrams, just to ensure that everything's in place for services to go across the network um, and just helping customers really onboard them onto the network. So yeah, I've been in there for about six months now, so yeah. So I work within content operations. So basically we get in loads of content from loads of different companies. So the BBC, Disney, Warner Brothers. So it could be films, it could be TV shows. Um, and basically we get that in, it could be like in a really like large file. So we have to um, encode it and compress it down to get it ready to go onto either the BT app or onto the UV boxes. Uh, and alongside that as well, we have to deal with all like, the subtitles and everything uh, and audio description. So we're making sure that all of our content is basically accessible for all of our customers. I work in the platforms team. Um, so currently I'm working on the help desk side of the platforms team um, and primarily we look after applications and accounts that are used um, for working in the BT tower. Um, we also, so like day to day, I could be doing stuff like um, creating accounts, troubleshooting, troubleshooting issues, um, but then also we look to improve these applications um, and kind of the software and hardware that people are using. So um, for example, uh, we work on building virtual computers now for everyone to use so it's a really good diverse role um, and it's a great way to see all the different stuff that's going on in the BT tower. Yes yeah, so I work in the end-to-end -end, end -end integration team so that essentially deals with the streams um, all the content that say cast team will put on the box and all the content that then Lewis is over checking and some Alana's then put the key in the actual end-to-end -end process of the stream itself um, is something that we'll deal with so that depends on the quality, so the different bit rates, so whether that's whether you're getting a pixelated screen or whether you're getting uh, HD, that all depends on, on the streams we're putting through. Um, so we have some really cool stuff, especially the BT Sport app during live competition. So whether that's a Champions League final or it's a rugby game or cricket, uh, we'll be monitoring the performance of that and making sure everyone's getting the best possible stream into their device, whether that's again, it's a PlayStation, a phone, or even their set-top box. Um, so yeah, so you can see how value and, and all the work that we get up to as apprentices. Uh, it's great to hear also from some non-apprentices and, and people that we work with, our managers and our bosses, and see what they really think of what, how what apprenticeships deliver and, and what they, they give to, to a business and what value they bring. Hi everybody, my name is Anne Potterton. I run the apprenticeship programme at BT. I've been asked to talk to you today about the benefits of becoming an apprentice or starting your career as an apprentice. In my view, there are many. The main one being, of course, that you're going to earn as you learn. Secondly, you're going to get a qualification and apprenticeship which has been designed by employers. And thirdly, you're going to get all of that valuable work experience along the way. Finally, what advice would I give you? Well, make sure that you research the organisation you want to apply to. Make sure you research the apprenticeship to make sure it's right for you and be very careful about putting together your application form. I wish you all the very best. Good luck. Hi, I'm Angela Jenner and I work in transformation at BT. Our apprentices are an absolutely essential part of our team and they contribute to everything that we do. They bring in new fresh ideas and really help us to think about things differently. They do a lot of volunteering and giving back to the community and they really are awesome ambassadors for us. My advice to anyone that wants to become an apprentice is be brave. There will be loads of opportunities that come in your direction. Make sure you grab them all. The apprentice scheme has been hugely beneficial to BT. It's given us the opportunity to tap into loads of brilliant untapped talent. And the great thing about apprentices, they bring a completely different perspective. So it's also given us the opportunity to all learn from each other. My advice to anyone considering doing an apprenticeship is if you're not sure what you want to study, 
um, you know, get in there and do an apprenticeship. It's a fantastic way to learn about business, uh, get some experience in a variety of jobs. And if you're so inclined, you can also end up with a degree at the end of it. So I'm um, big thumbs up to anyone who's thinking about doing an apprenticeship. It's great to hear the value that apprentices add across the business. But now we're going to answer some questions that you, you have all sent in and answer any myths that have come up. One of the most important questions we do get is around salary. So over to Lewis to discuss more about that. Thanks, Lana. So, yeah, coming into the salary, uh, the big thing about apprenticeships is do you earn much when you start as an apprentice? Um, and looking at some of the sort of figures and the average salary is you'll sort of look around about 15,000 starting salary, which is really good. And it's dependent on which role you take up and which course you follow. But a lot of them have a big sort of perspective for growth, um, increasing your salary every year, um, as well as sort of your assimilation wage. Um, and that could be dependent on what company you go into and also what sort of role you go for. But wage is not something to be put off with for an apprenticeship. But looking at more into the qualifications, Charlotte's got some information about this. Hi, thanks, Lewis. So um, a lot of misconceptions that people have about apprenticeships are that apprenticeships are really low skilled, um, but that's not true. So we've got apprenticeship levels all from level two, um, which is um, kind of the lower level apprenticeship and you only need, um, and it's only the equivalent of about five GCSEs all the way up to a level seven apprenticeships. So we also have level six degree apprenticeships, which are the equivalent to just a standard degree that you would get at university. Um, there are lots of different levels and of course you will need um, some different grades for that. So for example, all of our apprenticeships you need a minimum of five GCSEs, um, whether that's A to C or um, nine to four. Um, but for some of the higher levels, uh, you might need A levels, but that just depends on the apprenticeship that you are applying for. Um, we do have even um, apprenticeships at the level of a master's degree. So we do have a level seven apprenticeship um, and that is, um, and the one that BT offers, you can become a chartered accountant with that. Um, so Alana's got a little more uh, to tell you about the types of um, apprenticeship roles that you can do. Yes, so over at BT, we do offer a range of apprenticeships. So they, they range from like HR to finance into digital telecoms engineering. We also do offer at BT Sport and EE as well and Open Reach. So there is a variety. Um, some are more hands on, some are more your average um, desk type roles, um, but there is a very large variety. I think there's over 21 um, different pathways that you can choose from. So you can find out more of that on our Early Careers website if you have a look over there. I'm here with my friends from BT, and we are exciting and inspiring that next generation of scientists, engineers, mathematicians, and astronauts. So another big question we're asked, um, and especially one of the myths is about social life. So um, I went to university before apprenticeship, so I kind of have a good comparison of what it's been like before as a university student. Uh, my freedoms were a lot around how much time and how much uh, I, can, I can do away from home, obviously, the places I can visit, 
However, as an apprentice, I've, I've noticed the differences. I now have the, the freedom of money, um, having the, the living wage uh, as, as I'm working as an apprentice gives me the freedom to go and do stuff, whether it is go on holiday or, or, or go on, on nights out or go and do events. Um, that's something I can now have the, I have the freedom to do because of the money I'm given. Obviously, I have the weekends off, so uh, I'm still able to do some, some things. Whereas at university, it was a lot more about freedom, about being able to go and do whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. However, necessarily, wouldn't always have the money. Um, and also with work, you get a lot of social gatherings. So that is um, to do with maybe uh, five-a-side football or drinks after work or going to do events, team building events with your with your team. There's so many different opportunities you can do to get involved in social things at work and outside of work as an, as an apprentice. Uh, just other opportunities you, you can get involved with. Um, this is another video we can hear from. Hi, I'm Holly and I'm going into my second year as an enterprise apprentice on the BT Apprenticeship Scheme. The scheme gives you so many benefits and so many great aspects, but one thing in particular is the social side of the apprenticeship scheme. There's so many social events that we attend, like lunches, days out, nights out together. I also get the chance to go to lots of workshops and networking events in the media industry. Um, other things we do as a team are also attending and supporting my fellow apprentices in their awards evenings, which is a great opportunity to dress up and celebrate all of their achievements on the scheme so far. Um, I, we've also done some cool things which have been up in BT Sports Studios in Stratford where we did some 8K testing with Gary Barlow as well. So there are a range of social aspects and lots of opportunities to get out of the office in the scheme. Hi there, my name is Sean Norgate and I finished my BT apprenticeship back in 2017. I was in TV and digital media and I now work as a software engineer in the TV space in BT. Uh, so I did actually go to university after my A-levels, I did a full-time uni degree and definitely lots of good learning opportunities there but I found it hard to get a job afterwards since I didn't have any work experience. So I ended up doing a BT apprenticeship. Uh, now, whilst on the apprenticeship, I feel like I had all the same opportunities I had at uni. I mean, I, I was still at uni. I, I did a part time degree at a different university um, and had a lot of good opportunities there. But on top of that, I was in the workplace working with experts in their field, learning from these people and actually getting to apply the knowledge I was getting from university on a daily basis. Uh, so I feel like there were there were far more opportunities through an apprenticeship than I had through just university alone. So that was a little bit about some of the opportunities that we get in our actual work roles and at university as well. Um, but obviously there's so many other opportunities that we get to get involved in. And one of the really good things about it is the fact that we get recognised for those uh, opportunities. So all the different things that we do in our work roles um, and outside of it. So like volunteering, which we'll explore in a little bit. Um, we get to win awards, so that might be an internal award or an external award um, and usually with that sort of thing you get to go to like a fancy awards night um, you can get all dressed up, you can bring along your colleagues, you can bring along your line manager um, and even if you don't win the award itself it's still a really great night and you still really get to look back at all the things that you've achieved uh, through your apprenticeship so far. Another cool thing as well, uh, opportunity wise, is uh, the volunteering side. So for me, I was a support coach on BT's Work Ready Scheme. And I was essentially putting on uh, a two weeks um, sort of course where we had 50, 16 to 24 year olds. Um, so young adults turn up and it's all about upskilling them. So whether that's improving their CV skills, their interview skills, um, teaching them how to code, how to build their own website. A lot of that goes into um, helping out the new sort of generation coming through. So it's great to be able to give back. Um, when you're having so many great opportunities given to you yourself. Another great opportunity um, that I've got is uh, one I was invited to do um, a video for International Women's Day um, and I got to sit with three female directors and a grad and we got to have a great discussion um, about what it's like to be a woman in STEM. Um, obviously working in STEM um, you know there is some kind of inequality um, so there are loads of opportunities being a female in this um, industry it was really great to be able to talk about some you know really interesting subjects um, with these you know great women um, but yeah that was a, a great opportunity as well as internal campaigns you can also get involved in external campaigns um, so I've actually been included in a Spotify advert 
um, on behalf of GovUK promoting apprenticeships um, and also just other campaigns here and there to promote apprenticeships and get people involved um, within the area and just give them motiva motivation and, and encourage them to explore STEM and technology. Cool. And to finish up with some more volunteering stuff um, is some of the amazing venues we get to go to. Um, so part of that would be like the Emirates where we support um, Barefoot Company and introduce sort of primary school kids as well as early secondary school kids to upcoming technologies that help them learn and code in much simpler ways, as well as actually getting the chance to go to sort of separate from technology events like NJERC, which is the rowing event, which again gets you very involved um, and sort of enhances your skills in a different way away from the office um, and these are really great to pick up on and sort of make you a better person or a better apprentice along the way so on top of all this there's some really great support structures in um, place within BT itself um, and now we have Kate Self to explain some more about that. As an apprentice you get so much support not just from your managers, but also from your colleagues and peers. Your main portal call will probably be your line manager. They'll answer any concerns you may have. It can be from booking annual leave or calling in sick to any queries you may have about the apprenticeship or any additional learning that you're doing. Your line manager normally sees the ins and outs of your working day and anything you're doing, so they should be able to answer any questions for you. If they can't, you then have your apprentice coach. Your apprentice coach mainly deals with the learning side of things. So if you're doing a full degree or an MVQ, the uh, apprentice coach will be across this and understand all the different bits of learning that you're doing. They can normally li liaise with you and the learning provider to try and find any compromise if there's any issues there or if you just need additional support. After that, you have your ex-apprentices. These are the key for getting through your apprenticeship. If you have any queries about anything, They've been in the same situation as you and they can probably answer any question you have, no matter how little or small. Think, they were in the same shoes as you a couple of years ago, so they know exactly how you're feeling and exactly what you're going through. After that, you also have your current apprentices. Think, as cliche as it sounds, you're all one big family. They know exactly how you're feeling because they're probably feeling the same. They're going exactly what you're going through at the same time. So there'll be so much support there. I can't stress enough that throughout the apprenticeship there is support from every which way you turn. Normally if you're in an operational role you also get a buddy. So your buddy will be there to help you through your um, training and what you're trying to learn in your actual role. So if you don't know how to code your buddy will normally teach you how to code. Or if you're doing something different with your operational role they will guide you through it and help you through. No question is a stupid question and you'll soon learn this when you join the workplace. I can't stress, there is so much support when you're an apprentice, so you don't need to be worried about that at all. So a question that we get asked a lot is what does a day to day look like? Um, a day to day can vary a lot depending on the week, but um, so primarily I'll start work at about 8.30 in the platforms team. Um, emails start coming in from all different times, normally quite early in the morning where we are, we've got um, offshore teams as well. Um, so I'll come in um, and I'll log on and I'll look at uh, the inbox. So normally there'll be some emails from last night that have come in or ones very early. Um, so that could be stuff like locked out of my account which are kind of priority because we need to get people in so they can you know actually start work um, and then uh, we've also got phones as well so if people need uh, help then I'll answer the phone and help them that way um, on Tuesdays we have an apprentice team meeting which is an hour um, and we talk about all of the different stuff going on in the apprentice space um, and how we can support each other usually that takes us up to about lunchtime so um, that's probably about one o'clock um, got an hour of lunch which is nice and I have lunch with the other apprentices normally depending on who's in um, and then the rest of the evening um, I might have another meeting um, so a most of the time it's with my buddies um, if something else has come up that I'm not quite sure how to tackle how to handle they'll go through that with me or I could have a meeting with you know another apprentice about something else that's going on in the apprentice space or for example I look after the blog so I could put out a chunk of time just to try and finish that off um, and then that usually takes me up to about five o'clock um, where I finish the day um, and then I go home so that's kind of one example of a day-to-day -day, um, and I'll hand over to Alana and she can tell you a little bit about what her day looks like. So I'm like Charlotte my job role 
might require me to go out to customer sites. Um, so my day-to-day -day role is kind of varied. One day I might be at the desk, um, one day I might be in the labs looking at kit or equipment, and another day I might actually be at a customer site installing kit and equipment. Um, also, we do go on apprentice visits, so I might be at the office for a whole day um, with the apprentice teams, going to different sites, seeing how different businesses work, um, and just seeing how they link up with BT um, and different areas, to be fair. So it is very varied. Um, my job role is quite hands-on. However, as I stated before, there is loads of different areas in BT. Um, so we can talk to more, uh, we can talk to different people around the business who have less um, hands-on roles. Hi guys, my name's Aston Higford and I've recently rolled off the HR Apprenticeship Programme here at BT. Where over the past three years, I've had the privilege of being able to rotate in a variety of different roles and build a wide skill set with great experiences and build a network that will hopefully help me for the future years to come. So I'm here to basically tell you that apprenticeships offer far more than just engineering and the hands-on roles that you know people used to do generations and years ago. Nowadays, apprenticeships offer so much more and a great gateway into future careers. Apprenticeships are for engineering or hands-on roles only. As an ex-apprentice, I disagree with this statement. I did a role within HR for BT. BT, as well as numerous different companies, offer a wide variety of apprenticeships. This could be in a hands-on role within a supply chain warehouse, for example, or it could be in a customer-facing role um, in sales, or it could be in HR like I did, um, dealing with internal and external stakeholders. I would definitely recommend you to check out all the options if you are interested in applying for an apprenticeship, as there's loads of different options available. So you've heard about being an apprentice um, and what it takes to become one. So here's some of our top tips to help you guys along the way. My one would be that it's there's no harm in applying to as many apprenticeship roles as you see out there, uh, just to make sure that you sort of apply to the ones that have the most interest in you. Um, and then you have the most opportunity to get one. Over to Tom. Yeah, my top tip would definitely be um making sure you're prepared, uh, really research on the role you're going for, research the company. Um, so when it comes to either building a covering letter or another part of the application or for some assessment centers, sometimes you get to prepare an actual presentation or prepare anything for that day. Always research and always be as most prepared as you can because it'll make you feel a lot more confident going into it. Mine would be to network and connect yourself with like-minded people or people across the industry, um, just so you can get comfortable with the industry and you know you have connections within there if you ever need any help. So mine will be to say yes to all the opportunities that you get. Obviously, don't overwhelm yourself. You're trying to juggle your job role at the same time as trying to do your studying. Um, but obviously, there's opportunities that you get as an apprentice that you might not get when you're in your full-time role. So, um, But the opportunities that you do say yes to now might help you in five years' time. So, yeah, it can really help you out. My top tip is to, um, you know, don't tell yourself that you can't do something. If you stay optimistic and positive, um, then that is, you know, a great mindset to have. Just tell yourself that someone's got to have this role and why can't it be you? There might be a lot of people applying, but, you know, it doesn't go to say that you're not worthwhile. So just go for it and don't limit yourself. So hearing all those tips, uh, please have listen to this short clip now just about how to actually get onto the schemes and the different apprenticeships opening up. Hello, my name is Naomi and I'm an ex-finance apprentice at BT and I'm here to let you know that BT apprenticeships are opening this autumn. So keep checking the BT careers page for apprenticeships starting in September 2020. So that brings us to the end of our myth busting session. I hope that you found it useful. Um, if you were interested in applying to any of our apprenticeships, please head over to the BT early careers page. Um, but apart from that, thank you very much for watching. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.